Hi, this is Scott Shepard, photo media instructor at Lake Area Technical Institute, Watertown, South Dakota. And this is a tutorial that will show you how you can save your own adjustment presets in Aperture. Uh, it's a really pretty cool trick. I'll even show you how you can um, export them to share with uh, photography photographer colleagues. Uh, and by the way, these photos are not my photos. They were taken or they were found at 500pix.com, which is a great um, high level photo sharing site. So let's take this photo. And the goal here is to try to make it look like that. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go up to adjustments and um, I'm going to apply some presets. And this is the area where we're going to be adding our own presets. In fact, if you look closely, you notice that I have some called Shepherd presets, and you can have your own list there as well. And we're going to take a black and white preset and turn it black and white. Uh, the other thing that I want to do is I want to put a vignette on this photo. I want a little stronger vignette than that, so I'm going to go down to the uh, vignette brick and adjust it so that uh, the radius is fairly high and the intensity is fairly high. Um, the other thing that I would like to do with this is I want to apply the um, <laughs> noise reduction. Uh, and I'm going to apply that s mainly so that it will soften this picture just a little bit. I don't know if you notice what happens here, but we can control it. Finally, I'm going to boost the contrast just a little bit. I like this black and white photo to be a little bit contrasty. Um, I do want to adjust the shadows just a little bit here uh, so I can bring back a little bit of detail in the very darkest parts of her hair. And I think I'm going to call that good. Now, if I wanted to take these adjustments and apply them, let's say, to this photo, uh, we know probably that we can use the lift and stamp tool. But the problem with the lift and stamp tool is that it not only lifts the adjustments that you've made to it, but it also adjusts all the other uh, metadata that might be in this photo, like keywords and, in this particular photo's case, uh, GPS coordinates, which I do not want to apply to that photo. So the lift and stamp um, is a little bit awkward. We can delete these things that we don't want applied there. But instead, why not just save the adjustments we made to this photo that show up over here in these bricks as a preset? And how do we do that? We go up to Presets. We go Save as Preset. And we're going to call this one uh, Smooth Shepherd. Smooth Black and White. Now I put my name at the start of this just because I can keep mine straight from the others that are already here. Um, and I'm going to drag this up to um, a set of presets that I've already created. And by the way, that's in the dialog box here as well. If you go New Preset Group, that's how you create that. I'll show you that. So you just give it a name. Um, I'm going to delete that. Actually, I don't know how to delete that. So anyway, um, we have now a preset that's called Shepherd Smooth Black and White. And if I take this photo and I go up to Shepherd Presets, there it is. I get a preview even of what it's going to look like. So um, there's that preset. It's exactly the same one that was applied to that photo. Now, I want to create another um, uh, preset that I'm going to call um, Smooth Sepia. And in this particular case, I'm going to go up to Adjustments, uh, Sepia Tone. Uh, I'm going to adjust the intensity of this tone because I like just a little bit of color coming through. Now, the other thing that I want to do is that I want to apply a quick brush here. And in particular, I'm going to apply Skin Smoothing. And I'm going to apply it to the entire photo. I'm going to boost this a little bit down here. So I'm looking for kind of a dreamy look in this particular preset. And uh, not exactly natural and real. And now I'm happy with what I've done there. And I'm going to save 
that as a preset as well. In fact, we're going to call it Shepherd Smooth Sepia. And I'm going to drag that up into uh, Shepherd Presets. And if I wanted to apply it to this particular photo, all I have to do is go up to Shepherd Presets, Shepherd Smooth uh, Sepia right there. Now I'm going to show you one last trick with these presets and I think that once you see this um, you're going to be pretty amazed by the power of Aperture 3.0. Um, what if we wanted to apply those presets to a group of photos that we're uh, importing? In other words, what if we treat a certain kind of file um, the same way always when we, uh, when we get it into Aperture? Wouldn't it be nice to apply those things to the to the photos as we're importing them so they're exactly or at least initially the way we want them to be uh, right at import. And so I've gone to the disk that's in um, this machine, um, the, the um, compact flash card that I put into the uh, drive of this machine. I've highlighted that and I've got three photos on this that are portraits or informal portraits that were taken at a gathering not too long ago. And I've hit um, all of this started when I went to import. And you might be familiar with the fact that over here we have the way to name the projects, for example. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to import them into this particular project, which is the project that I was using um, for the first part of this tutorial. And we have some other things that we can do in terms of import settings. So, for example, you know that we can rename the photos when we import them. But there is a setting here that's called um, Adjustment Presets. And I want to make sure that that shows. Uh, we also have Metadata Presets. You may have worked with those. We're going to make that go away just so that we're not looking at that. And here you have um, all of those presets that are the same presets up there when you are making your adjustments. And lo and behold, there's Shepherd Presets right there. And there's Shepherd Smooth Sepia. So I'm going to select that as a Adjustment Import Preset. And now having selected these three photos, I'm going to um, and the project. And I'm going to hit Import Checked. Now these pictures have been imported. And it looks like they weren't adjusted, but give them some time. And you'll notice that the uh, settings are there. Now, I can't say that the this particular preset um, really flatters these photos, but I just wanted you to note that the same setting that I applied to these two have been uh, set to these as well. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, have I ruined that picture? as I've imported it. In other words, what happened to all of the original file information? The good news is that's all there. Remember, this is a non-destructive editing tool. So that if I wanted to, I could go back and I could reset all adjustments. Or if I wanted to, I could um, make a copy based on the master version. And there's the original file right there. So there's the adjusted file. And, there's, and by the way, one last trick that I would like to show you is this. If you go up to Adjustments and Presets, you'll notice that um, one of the choices that you have here is Edit Presets. And if you go here and highlight, let's say, the uh, collection that you want, I can export this. And so I just hit the Export button. Uh, this is called Shepherd Presets and I want to put it in a place that I've already practiced putting this and um, I overwrote the old one and I click OK right here in my um, Aperture folder and I have a folder called Aperture Presets and I just wanted you to see that the preset looks like that. Now this file is a fairly small file, 46 kilobytes. I can email that to a friend or colleague and they can use the import function in that same tool set preset, edit presets, and instead of export, we go down here to import. Uh, we find the file and we import it. And that's how that works. So 
I hope you find some use in this. I think this is a very powerful tool in Aperture 3.0. Thanks for listening.